All right, let's do it. Let's parse objects. This is the last thing that we have to parse in our JSON structure. I mean, there's a lot of things we kind of waved our hands out along the way, but this is good. This is looking good. Uh, we have everything we need. So what do we need to do now? We need to parse members in objects. So an object looks a lot like an array. If you look at it here, you just have curly braces instead. And then you have these weird members things, which use element, but they also have a key with white space around it and a colon. So nothing too crazy here. So first things first, why don't we extract element because we're going to be using it. Not that it's like totally necessary, it's pretty simple, but element is just going to be this white space thing. So element. Okay, and then parsing an object looks a lot like parsing an array. Of course, we want to use a JS object instead of a JS array. And the inner type here, I'm going to do something that I consider to be controversial. And I actually don't like as much as the alternative, but we're going to do it. It'll keep things simpler for now. And it wouldn't be hard to convert to the alternative. I'm going to use an association list for the key value pairs inside of the object. Now, why is this controversial? Well, if you boot up node, it's pretty clear. Um, if you say this, for example, what happens? Well, node is going to ditch that first key, as it should. I think this is the right thing to do, um, or error, maybe, tell you that there's something wrong in your structure. Um, but an association list is not, we're not going to actually do the work of ditching duplicate keys. Um, and the reason for this, the reason libraries opt to do this sometimes is that it's kind of one of those problems that starts propagating and spreading and then if you don't embrace it, <laughs> your library isn't compatible enough to do some things. Like if you're using another parser that keeps duplicate keys and it's using a subsystem that's reliant on duplicate keys, which some are, or the order of keys, this will preserve the order and preserve the duplicates. Again, it's controversial and I don't actually like this. I don't think it's appropriate behavior for JS objects, but because there's ambiguity, I'm gonna keep it and because it's easier to keep it for now. Um, so anyways, that's a little tirade. Um, and also, you know what? One other little tirade or uh, thing that I noticed is that we support trailing commas in our um, arrays and we will as well as in our objects. That's not actually supported in JSON. So we're gonna finally make JSON right here and we're going to support commas. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we're just gonna be lazy and do it because I don't wanna take the time not to. So. Basically, uh, what is a JS object? Well, a JS object is pretty much the same thing as an array, except instead of using these uh, curly bra uh, square braces, we're gonna use curly braces. And instead of parsing a bunch of elements, we'd parse a bunch of members. So what is a member? Well, members are many set by member with comma. Okay, that's good. So, uh, hmm. What do we need to do then? Well, basically a member is just white space around a string key, a colon, and then an element. So we can actually use our sweet new monad instance and we can just say white space, throw away the value. Then we can say uh, key is a JS string, white space, and then we need car colon. And then this is actually reusing element, that's why I extracted it. So value is element. And in the end, we just have to return key element. Now let's see how we did. I think that that's right. We might have to insert a couple things. Um, const dollar white space can't match JSON with string. Expected type parser. Oh, it thinks the second thing here is a parser, huh? Um, okay, what did I do wrong? Members, maybe member is of the wrong type. So let's just annotate member with its type to uh, clarify what we mean. So member is a parser of JS Oh, actually a string, this is probably the problem. String to um, JSON. 
yeah, so that's the problem. We're using a JS string here. Um, we actually want to use kind of the internals of a JS string. So really, we should be able to pluck out a JS string here, um, pluck out the inner string. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So to do that, we're actually just going to say case J, uh, key of, and then if we have a JS string, and this should be, we'll call this JS key. Um, otherwise, um, if we have anything else, we want to fail. That's, this shouldn't actually be necessary, but JS string is pretty specific to actually parsing this thing out. It's got this constructor on it. Um, so yeah, that's okay. No big deal. Let's run it again. Okay, we still have a problem because the second argument it thinks is a parser of JSON. We must be doing something silly here. Oh, it should be value, not element. Okay, so it compiles, is it correct? Well, object is gonna be our first thing in JS value, so let's go ahead and add that to the top. Let's also extract out um, JS object so that we can test it individually. And let's try a couple of tests. Let's just imitate our array tests. So what do we got here? This should always be JS object now. Okay, so empty should be JS object of empty works with some white space. So it should parse an integer, so we could say like a, A integer, um, and this should return back, let's see, can I put this down here, will that work? I don't know. JS object where the first thing is the string A, and let's just run what we have so far, and you know what? I am going to do what I did last video and take these up to the top so that they run first. It's a little silly, but you know, it's good to get quick feedback in general. <clears throat> oh, we have a couple of warnings about how we're doing white space and we have a failure there. Okay. So we're failing because falsifiable after zero. Okay, hmm, what is the problem? Well, I guess we can add a specific case for zero and see what's actually coming back. Oh, haha. <laughs> Silly. Uh, we have a closing square brace. There we go. Let's see if that works now. Hey, we're looking good. Excellent. Um, really quickly, while I'm here, let's clean up those warnings. Basically, as I said, we could throw white space away, but we don't. So we have to explicitly kind of ignore it. And we probably have to do the same thing for car here as well. Um, that's just good good practice in Haskell because there is a value there. And a lot of people like to write it like this. I personally think that's pretty nice. I'll keep it. Um, so let's try some other things. Let's try uh, let's try an object with an array inside. JS object where the first thing is A, and that maps to an array. This goes here. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Ooh, 
Oop, we failed. Oh, because I called that B. <laughs> All right. Okay, looking good. Let's try multiple elements. That is very important. Should be a JS object where the first thing is A, the second thing is B. Ooh, man, I'm all over the place with this today. Oh, 99 and 42. Of course I didn't use one and two. That would have been too, too uh, consistent with A and B. Okay, there we go. Commas are necessary. Sure, we can we can test that. It's probably not as important of a test, but you know. So this should be nothing. And then what we really want to do is we want to parse parse JS object. We can just steal what's up here and get rid of the comma. Okay, excellent, so far so good. Let's move this back down and let's add one test in JS value. And then I think, uh, I think we're good to go. I think we've uh, pretty much parsed the basics of JSON. Um, maybe in the next video, I will, um, I will make a generator for JSON strings that fit in the domain we've parsed. And we should be able to write one property test that generates a JSON value, puts it into a string, parses it out, and make sure what went in is what comes out. That would be a really interesting test. Hi. Hi there. So this should be a JS object. Um, and the first thing is, well, the only thing string there, which has high as its key. And let's run it, and this is the moment of truth. This is kind of uh, making sure our entire parser works, um, at least to some degree, for the tasks I've written. Just watch all that green go by. Excellent, 60 tasks. Of course, we have way more than that because some of these are running hundreds of random tasks. But anyways, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed writing this stuff.